Hey guys, it's M4J here and welcome back to the M4J network here on OpenTTD. Today I am going back to building some rail. Uh, it's been a long, long time since I last sat down here and actually built some proper railways, but we are back doing just that this week. So, this is Bar City. This has been something that has annoyed me for a long, long time. Um, mainly because people ask in the uh, in the comments and on Discord and places like that about um, when's the latest version of the map going to be released. And I always say soon. Just got a few loose ends that need tying up. Uh, you know, get some stuff finished and, and then it will be ready to go. And this is one of those things that I'm talking about when I say get some stuff finished. Basically this... Uh, that I'm building today is the east to west connection that runs through the center of Bar City. And I say the center, it's not really the center, but it does go to Bar City Central, which you're seeing right now. Um, and for a long, long time, uh, since the rebuilding of Bar City Central Station, in fact, it's just sat abandoned, this mothballed branch line. Uh, let me get it up on my screen here so I can tell you exactly what we're working with. So we've got Bar City Tarnley Station to the west. Bar City Brookside Station to the east, and um, this like east to west line that used to run, I think it used to be like a plus shaped junction or like a diamond plus shaped junction. I don't really know how you, how you uh, describe it to be honest, but it was that, um, and it was fine. But when Bar City Central got rebuilt, I decided to rebuild all these junctions here as well, and just temporarily, in inverted commas, severed. The, uh, the connection. What I didn't anticipate was it would be over a year, maybe even two years, before I actually came back and finished this. But that is what we're doing today. So we're building new lines, new approach lines on the east and west side here of, of um, the northern approach to Bar City Central. And we are also completing the branch line to the east through Bar City Brookside and now into the sticks. And I think it connects up with the east coast main line, but I can't remember where. Uh, you will see it later on in the episode, though. Um, and then we're we're completing this junction again. So, Bar City Brookside is actually quite a main station in terms of its uh, its usage. It will be a major commuter station on the um, the Bar City commuter belt, as it were. Uh, currently, we have the north side of the belt and the south side of the belt. Shortly, we will have the east side of the belt, and then the west side will be uh, arriving in the not too distant future. You may remember we also have this weird, uh, I don't know what you call it really, if if Bar City had an overground system I, was, I suppose it would be considered part of that. But we have this kind of loop line that exists that runs from Bar City Central and then it runs uh, south slash west to Bar City Senningbury and then it branches off and heads through Sargate uh, Slayberg Springs or Slaberg Springs, although that doesn't have a station right now, and then it goes over to Bruntberg, which used to be an airport and it will be an airport again, but I managed to uh, annoy the local authority while I was working on this project, which means I can't build the third platform at that station right now, nor can I build the new airport but there will be an airport here and it will be a proper eye candy airport as well um, and that was that, that was the line, and then the, there was a little two-track branch that ran back up to Tarnley. Uh, actually, was there? No, there wasn't. Sorry, there wasn't. I don't think there was. But now there is. Um, in today's episode, we do actually build a two-track main line, that, uh, or branch line, sorry, that connects up to Tarnley. And the idea is then that trains can head south out of Bar City Central round this loop through Tarnley and then continue east under the main lines to um, Brookside and then beyond. As well as having a service that just runs north and then takes that leg of the junction. It's it's kind of complicated, but I think it kind of works. Uh, this this series of junctions that we have here is kind of inspired by South London. If you look at some of the railways around South London, uh, all these flyovers and dive unders and um, you know crossovers and all sorts of things, uh, it's very very convoluted, particularly around um, sort of Vauxhall, Waterloo. Victoria, Clapham Junction, that kind of area. But you've also got places like Loughborough Junction and Beckingham Junction and um, even around London Bridge. I mean, London Bridge, the new, is it the Bermondsey flyover, I think it was, that was uh, built as part of the Thameslink program? Um, badly needed as well, in my opinion. 
it's kind of inspired by all of that. Um, bear in mind, of course, that Bath City is supposed to be like the continental Europe-inspired city and it's Guard City that's meant to be the London-inspired one. Uh, Amsterdam also has some uh, some junctions a little bit like this, uh, particularly on the main line from Schiphol Airport to Amsterdam Central. Uh, there are some junctions like this as well. I haven't done too much research into this, so you'll have to bear with me, especially if you are Dutch and you know that I'm wrong. Um, you'll have to bear with me there for sure. But uh, my one and only train ride in the Netherlands uh, did involve going across quite a few junctions and things like that. So I'm kind of taking inspiration from a memory that I have from, what is it, six years ago now, uh, and hope that it's still in fact accurate. So as you can see, the junction is quite complicated. From from um, Tarnley, you can run north, south and east. From Brookside, you can run west and south. And from... Um, Fort Dronford is it? Yeah, Fort Dronford you can run south and west. There is no north to east link because chances are most trains running from Brookside will be going to Bath City Central and therefore won't need to use uh, Fort Dronford Station. The electrification here has tweaked slightly as well. All external platforms, the outer platforms at Bath City Central are now dual voltage. Uh, the westernmost and easternmost approach lines on the northern section there are third rail. The central, or oh, the next ones in, sorry, after that, are dual voltage, and it's just one track there that's dual voltage, and then all the middle ones are still overhead electrified only. And beyond that, uh, that's pretty much it for the infrastructure here. There are lots of um, signals and tunnels and bridges and things that have been added. I believe I've signaled everything correctly. I have so far changed the signals at Bath City Central to uh, allow trains to access Brookside. I do add the waypoints, the northern approach waypoints, but I've also set up Bath City Central to um, allow trains through that are heading straight to Brookside or Tarnley. And that, I think, is how I'm going to run the schedule just to make sure that they are on the right lines uh, when they cross over um, or leave Bar City Central, they are on the right lines so they don't end up going the wrong way. Because if I just make it so that they go to the waypoint, then they might be on the western side when they're turning east and that causes complications. So I think this is all done, set up correctly and should work, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, now this would be the point of the episode where I say it's the first week of a new month and because of that I have got uh, some rail news for you. Sadly though, you might hear this actually in my voice, I did record the episode last week on my laptop and people said they couldn't tell the difference but I could. So maybe you can and you're just being very very polite, if so thank you. But uh, you might be able to hear in my voice that I'm not using my usual microphone, I am not at home right now, I am still away and because of that I don't have my magazine. It's arrived. I've been sent a photograph of it, so I know that it's arrived. My family likes to taunt me, but I don't actually have any up-to-date rail news for you. Um, so I can't really, yeah, I can't really update uh, accurately about rail news. But uh, I have got some updates on the timetable system that we were working on last week, uh, as well as the platform occupancy and uh, the database system that I talked about as well. So I've not abandoned the project as such, but I've realized that entering all of this data by hand right now is just not a feasible way of doing things. Uh, it just doesn't work, let's be honest here. It just does not work. So because of that, um, I've kind of put it on ice for the time being whilst we come up with another system my preference would be to have a, a fully functional database system and I use the word database but it doesn't have to be a database I'm, I'm actually considering making a website either integrated into my existing website or a brand new one uh, I think integration is is the way to go here because a it's cheaper and b it'll be easier to run but um the idea being that the entire network will effectively be controlled by this database. So we'll have uh, stock units, which I've talked about before. So each train now will be given a um, stock number. I don't even know if I'm using the right terms here. You know, like uh, in real life, you've got, uh, I don't know, service 2B05 operated by, uh, actually, hang on, 
So let's say Thameslink, okay, because I use Thameslink a lot whenever I go into London. Let's say you've got service two. I don't even know what the um, reporting numbers are for for London, but let's say two L O five, and it's operated by unit number uh, seven zero zero one o four, something like that. So that's seven zero zero one o four. That will be the uh, the train unit number. And then you'll have a, a reporting number, which is the service that it operates. And all of that will be controlled via this database. So I can very easily see, oh, this is train 153056 or something like that. And it's operating service 2AXX between Sunnington and Honningville. I've literally just pulled random things out of my arse there to try and make an example. It's probably completely wrong. Even in my version of train reporting numbers and stuff, it's probably completely wrong. But that's the example that I'm going to be using now. And I've already forgotten what train number I said, so hopefully you guys can remember it. Um, but that will be listed in the database. And every now and then, trains might move from one service to another, and then the database will reflect that. You'll have to manually insert the change, of course, but uh, being able to detect that easily would be great. And then also having a system where you can put in existing services and from that it will calculate an average running time between two points and then every time we create a new service we can say you know between Woolworth and Plindom, uh, Plindom Junction and it will straight away go ah it will take five minutes and maybe even create uh, an AI system that can recommend um, when to run that train in order to maximize uh, efficiency because something that George has been doing uh, as the franchise holder of GWR is he's been collating data for uh, passenger numbers and where people are going to where people are traveling from things like that which might sound very geeky and very nerdy but it's actually very useful in the real world you might be aware of something called the beaching report that happened uh, the reshaping of British rail or British rail Britain's railways what was it reshaping of Britain's railways I think it was uh, by Dr. Richard Beeching. We all hate him but actually kind of what he did was a necessary evil. I don't cond uh, condone it at all. I condemn most of what happened but um, that's what they did basically. They stood at station en entrances with a clipboard and, and asked people where are you going from, where are you going to. Every time a train stopped they would count how many people got on, how many people got off. We're basically doing a 2021 version of the beaching report, except we're not going to use that name because we don't want to be uh, uh, abused in the streets. We're going to call it the M4J report, I think. And George is doing some very useful work where every hour he goes through and looks at all the stations on the GWR network, where people are going from, where people are going to. And from that, we are building a, um, a list of... of in demand stations on the network and that allows us to run more services to those stations and therefore carry more people make more money all that good stuff this is all very very useful information even though this is a game don't get me wrong open TCD is very much a game but this is kind of life skills that we're working on here and because of that this database will also carry uh, an index of, of um, stations on the network and and maybe like the top five destinations from each location. So for example, Plindom Junction, the top five destinations might be Woolworth Central, Morningpool Falls, I think um, I think the airport, Great Winfield Airport was, was on that list quite a lot. Uh, and then there's some um, sort of outlier stations as well. So ones that aren't necessarily on the GWR, which again is useful because it allows you not just to create good services on the GWR network, but also across the entire M4J network. There might be a demand for service. In fact, there is a demand for passengers on GWR to cross Guard City to the east and head out that way. And because of that, I'm currently looking into building an extension to the um, Hatfield Light Railway branch that runs through east to west, the center of the city. Uh, and from Guard City St. Michael, building a little one single track spur down to Guard City St. Peter uh, and having that as it, yeah, St. Peter. I said the wrong one then. I thought I said the wrong one then. No, no I said the right one. Um, and allowing people to cross from east to west that way. It's very, very low down on the priorities list right now because it is in fact possible to cross from east to west just by taking the metro or the underground one stop to GSMI and then taking the HLR from there. So it's not it's not a huge priority, but it is still a useful um, project to consider in the future. Plus, there's this crossrail scheme that I've talked about in the past, which is still a long, long ways off, but it is 
uh, still in my like very back of my mind. I'm I'm still looking at potential routes for that. There's there's some stuff going on in the background, but yeah, right now I'm focusing on this database because I think this is going to be really really useful, not just for for learning new skills, but also in general just to get the data that I need to to kind of make this network a little bit more efficient and a little bit just better to be honest, just better. Um, so I'll, I'll have more news on that as it uh, comes through. I was going to do another episode on that this week on the timetable, but the more I look at it. It's a really good idea in principle, but Google Sheets is not the uh, the solution uh, as to how to make it a reality. And I kind of wanted to do some building. And I was talking to my my uh, my girlfriend about this, about you know what what kind of things should I be doing this week? And she said, "Have you built anything recently?" And I sort of said, "Well, no, I haven't built anything for a while actually, because I've been mostly um, either on the move and missing episodes, or I've been working on like timetables and and things like that, or you know rebuilding existing things." This is the first opportunity to kind of build something from scratch, really. Uh, so here we are. Now, I, I will also say you, you, you're seeing me build one branch right now out of Brookside. There is going to be at least another, maybe even a third. So the one that I'm building right now from Brookside, it immediately curves south and crosses the river. There's scope to build one that curves to the north, and there's also um, scope to have one that runs east along the north side of this lake. Uh, just out of Brookside. So we run south via Renway and Coningston and Plaffing Hill and places like that. Um, but there are other opportunities for other branch lines in the future. I'm also hoping right now, because I'm recording the audio for this on Premiere, uh, but because I'm on a different device, I'm hoping that it's not going to butcher the audio again. I'm really hoping it's not going to butcher the audio again. Otherwise, I'm going to be very, very upset indeed. Uh, if it is out of sync, then you'll know that it butchered the audio. Uh, you might even hear me shouting and swearing just at the end of the video there as I hit stop and notice that it's uh, butchered the audio. But hey, I thought I'd give it another go. We shall see. Speaking of giving things a go, I actually downloaded a new station set which you'll see me use. So I still use the Dutch platforms for Brookside, Bar City Central and um, that junction station that I've just built there which I still can't remember the name of. I thought I'd give this new station set a go. Um, so I believe it's... I don't think it's BR stations, but it might be like Timberwolves platforms or something, I think. Uh, and I thought I'd give it a go. It's okay. I think some of the um, the names of the pieces are a little confusing, and also the organisation of the pieces are a little confusing. But overall, I think it's a very, very pretty set. The, the platforms are very, very high res, uh, considering all the other assets that I've got in the game they do kind of stand out a bit but I say that's a good thing more than anything um, I'm a big fan of them it just took me a while to a explore the set and then b find the parts I was actually looking for in order to build these um, but yeah I think overall it looks pretty good so might use these for some more of these uh, commuter branches moving forward you've got three types you've got uh, wooden concrete and modern some of the stations I do use modern, so this one I'm building right here, hopefully this syncs up so you can see. The station in the cutting here I use modern because you can imagine it was added later on. But there's also one on the water side where I use the wooden platform because you can imagine it's it's an old relic of Victorian railways uh, where it used to be a um, uh, like a fisherman's dock type station and then over time it's it's become this like valuable commuter station for the Bath City network but um, it's kept its legacy as a, uh, a wooden platform station. I don't think wooden platform stations are allowed anymore, uh, at least not on mainland UK. I believe on the Isle of Wight some of them are still wooden platforms but I think health and safety now they have to be uh, surfaced. So um, it's kind of a lost relic now of uh, of yesteryear these, um, these stations but I thought I'd throw one in just as a legacy thing, I think it looks quite nice. Uh, and then we've got this this covered one here as well with the uh, the train shed, which I think looks very very nice too. So overall, I I really like this this platform set. I will be using it more often, um, but I will of course be sticking with the tried and tested uh, Dutch platforms as well because I'm a big fan of those. BR stations may or may not be getting another release in the future. If it does, I I do look forward to that because um, there are some interesting ideas being pitched for that. Um, I mean, the whole BR train stations, tracks, team, um, they're all being carried by a single person right now. But, uh, yeah, 
it's all looking good still and some of the, the um, assets being created right now look fantastic and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on those uh, and adding them to the network. Right, we're pretty much done for the episode now. It's been a short one again this week. I'm trying to keep things short and sweet right now because I've only got uh, an external hard drive with me right now that I'm capturing everything to. And I'm not just capturing M4J stuff, I'm capturing loads of other stuff to it as well. So I'm trying to keep things on the shorter side at the moment. But um, yeah, really happy with how this branch line turned out. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. I will be unpausing the game for the first time in like a month uh, once this is done and I'll be adding some new Bar City commuter services along this line. One going the long way around the loop, one going the short way around the loop. Uh, that three platform station that I've built there, that you saw me build with the train shed, services will be terminating there, some will be terminating right down at the end of the line. Uh, trying to get as many varieties of, of trains operating on this as possible. But we'll see how well that goes. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and of course if you're enjoying the series drop some comments down below with ideas for future episodes and we will be updating you on that database as soon as possible i'm hoping for a short time frame on that but you never know even if it's just a prototype that doesn't really work very well i'm happy with that because it's something to build off um, besides all that if you haven't already subscribed to the channel be sure to hit the subscribe button if you have already subscribed to the channel thank you guys for your continued support and until next time i will see you soon